Hello and welcome to Take Your Time, a Persona 5 Royal in real time podcast where we play through Persona 5 Royal in real time according to the game's calendar, which is also the real time of our real world life. I'm your host, Jonathan Dorbush, and I'm joined, as always, by Tom Marks. Hello! That was, Hello. That was a nice one. I liked, I liked the um, how you dialed it in there. That was that was a good length of... I appreciate it. Just silly enough, but not so excessive. I'm, mm-hmm. we're, we're off to a good start this morning. The undercurrent is that you're critiquing me in in terms of my past performance, which is really great to do live on the show. Um, <laughs> but uh, what I was going to say was, uh, of course, on the show, we do like to take our time going through the events of Persona 5 Royal uh, as we play through it. Of course, we'll be going through uh, this mid-September time in the game. Uh, but some people shouldn't take their time when they're running a race, perhaps. And there is indeed a fun run happening outside Tom's window. So if you hear any excess noise, we apologize in advance. What a segue, uh, yes. But but just know that it's like, you know, as you're exploring the streets of, uh, of Persona, it's like you're exploring the streets of the Bay Area. I, I was uh, setting I was setting up everything for this and like minutes it felt like minutes before we started going. I literally just hear on a loudspeaker outside my house, three, two, one, <laughs> go and they start playing music and I was like, oh man. Oh, man. <laughs> It, it couldn't have been more perfect as, like, a what they said uh, as they get into it. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's great. But, uh, yes, apologies in advance if you hear anything uh, in the background. But anyway, uh, as we get into this week, we do want to do some some housekeeping at the top of the show. And also to say, of course, as, as I mentioned, we're in the middle of our uh, September. We're, we're starting to get into the next palace. If you haven't been listening this whole way, if you're like, what's this Persona show I just found? Go back and listen, because we're going through the entire game from beginning to end. So... There's, there is a, a weird thread to this game and this podcast, if you will. It's the game. Anyway, Tom, we have some house cleaning to do. Uh, and that begins with your pop quiz answer. Yes. I'm also trying to calculate right now. I think yes. we are officially past the halfway point. This might have happened okay. the previous week, but yeah, I think we're officially past the halfway point in terms of like the meat of this game, which Ooh. is pretty wild uh, because we're on episode 24 and it's been so long. And I don't know. It's cool. Uh, yes. And Tom, good news. I deleted your save, so we have to restart. <laughs> At least we can restart with the actual lining up calendar dates next year. <laughs> um, yes, last week I asked about a, uh, a, a what felt apparently in retrospect like a softball pop quiz question, which was y- you if you go on one of the dates with one of the, the girls in Hawaii, you go get garlic shrimp. And there's a very friendly garlic shrimp man who's a fan of the Phantom Thieves. Uh, and he asks you, he requests something of you to tell the Phantom Thieves. And I asked, what did the Garlic Shrimp Man request? And uh, I think there were fewer comments that didn't get the right answer than there were comments that did <laughs> on the YouTube channel. Uh, Jonathan, did you did you have this one, get this one, know this one? Uh, I did, but it was such an impressive return from the audience. I want to give them the due spotlight. So why don't cool. we take it away? That is, all right, that's, that's nice of you. And yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you ask... The garlic shrimp man, or the garlic shrimp man asks you if you know the Phantom Thieves, and depending on who you're going with, they have some reaction. Uh, And then he says, if you run into them, tell them I say hello, which is just a great thing for a a weird American or Hawaiian garlic shrimp man to say. And then he says, and ask him to change people's hearts so everyone loves shrimp, which is a... you know that's that's a that's quite it's, a noble goal. It's a smart business move in his case. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I lo- I do love that he says. Yeah, tell him I say hello, as if like, oh yeah, that guy, right? Of course. It's like um, probably culturally insensitive to be like, you're Japanese. Tell him I say hi. But like, we yeah, won't go into bit. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, congrats to everyone who did get that one right. There were, as you said, a lot of comments of people getting it right, which I yeah. greatly appreciate. Um, that uh, the garlic shrimp man. Through left an impression on people apparently i mean it's so he must be able to get that message across to the phantom thieves we assume if they're able to relay it of course but, the, but i was playing with my fiance and the, he was like tell him to change her people's hearts so everyone loves shrimp and she was like everyone already loves shrimp and i was like oh huh okay it's it is not an unpopular food that they're yeah. trying yeah that to be fair um yeah that's very true but thank you to everyone who who replied with the answer uh it was very fun to see i i get notifications for when there are new comments and so it was like 
<clears throat> went back to the episode. Oh yeah, just everyone got it. Every, yeah. Everyone got this one, which was yeah. fun. Uh, way to go. But uh, speaking of that, we did, of course, get some other viewer comments. A uh, couple that I want to read from the YouTube version of last week's video. Uh, and you can, of course, find the whole show on YouTube by searching Dornology or take your time on YouTube. Uh, but for now, I want to start off reading a uh, an email we got from Austin. Uh, Austin wrote in to Dornology at gmail.com like you can and wrote, Hey, Jonathan and Tom, boy, am I tired today. Another night staying up too late in the metaverse. Thank you both for this podcast. I started listening back in late April after hearing Andrew Goldfarb, our patron saint, and others rave about this game on IGN Podcasts. I've been intending to play this game since I bought the original P5 back in 2017. I never started it, though, because I was intimidated by the length of it. Seeing your podcast release gave me the nudge to get royal and finally take the plunge. Hooray! Very much appreciate it. I've been experiencing this entire journey alongside you both, and it has been incredible. 2021 has been an even more draining year for me than 2020 was, and my time spent with the Phantom Thieves has been a welcome reprieve. I will never forget these friends I've made in this game throughout this year. And I look forward to Monday mornings in a way I never have before. I always love hearing your take on the events after I've gone through them. However, I've stopped taking my time. It's currently the middle of September in real life, and I'm now in late November in the game. Yay. No spoilers, but man, things are intense. Yes, they yeah. are. Um, yeah, for anyone playing through for the first time, as Tom said, we're, we're, we're past the halfway point, but much more is yet to come. There's a lot to go. Uh, Austin did have a question, though. Here's my question for you, too. Do you think this game is too long? I've logged 136 hours so far, and I still have a whole semester left. This game feels like a Stephen King novel where about halfway through it's so good you want to just pass uh, push through to the end, but you still have 500 more pages to go. I suspect I still have another 40 hours of gameplay at that rate I'm going so far. Uh, I've loved every part of this game, but I need to sleep at night. Thanks for what you guys are doing with this show, Austin. Yeah, that's a good question, right? Because the first time I played the base game, it took me about 115 hours. Yeah. Uh, Persona 5 Royal, when I beat it, I think it took me 130 to 140, somewhere in that range. Um, I don't know. It's a question of what you want out of your games, right? Like, I'm very content with, like, an eight-hour game nowadays. Eight to 20 hours, I think, is my sweet spot for games. But also, the JRPGs specifically, I think, are in a sort of, like, they have an audience who expects a certain game length out of them. And also, they tell stories that you can't really tell in 20 hours, right? So they, like, we talk about it a lot on the show. Jonathan, you mentioned a lot on this show of, like, Oh, yeah, you wouldn't be having this silly little just, like, hour-long aside scene where they just do something fun or decompress about what just happened in a much shorter game. So, I don't... I think... I'm probably of the minority opinion of the larger public, which is that I don't think Persona 5 is too long because I think that I really, really enjoy the pace it moves at, and I really enjoy how much there is and the, the diversity of what there is to do throughout the story. Um, yeah. But it is also an incredibly long game. <laughs> yes, yeah. It is easily one of the longest games I have played in the last few years. Yeah. Um, and Austin, just to like use your reference point, you're about 136 hours in only in November. Knowing that Royal has like the whole extra semester to it, I don't know how long that takes. But I would say you're a little... You've spent a little more time in the game than I probably did at that point on my original playthrough. And not that that's wrong, because again, we like the whole point of the show is to play the game at the pace that you want to. Yeah. Um, and so, like, as long as you're having fun with it, I don't necessarily think the game is too long. I think, yeah, Tom, as, as you mentioned, I appreciate and don't mind it with this game because I do love spending so much time with these characters that it, it feels like playing through a five or seven season TV show roughly yeah. is and kind also, of how I see it. Also like, you know, you can, you could bring up the, maybe the argument that like, Oh, well it's so long. A lot of people don't finish it. Cause we talked about people getting caught in like this palace coming up. Right. And just kind of dropping off. But at the same time, like I would be willing to bet that the completion rate, like the percentage of people who start this game that finish it, is probably pretty similar to any other sort of length game. Because, like, only 50% of beat people beat 10-hour games anyway, right? Yeah. So, like, I would be willing to bet that probably that's, like, the people who are going into this know what to expect to a certain extent. And there's, that's, hundred the 100-hour 100 game is not, like, an anomaly for a JRPG, I don't think. I'm going to see if I can pull it up on my phone, but I'm going to look at the completion rating versus uh, trophies 
just to right. see if it if it tells me sort of how much people have played. But yeah, I, I'm with you. Don't it's, do Royal. Do the base game. Very true. Um, I know that this <laughs> is uh, sort of going around the question, Austin, but yeah, I, I think it's honestly a personal choice. I yeah, I think the game is extremely long, uh, but I don't uh, fault it for that because I do, as you said, like... I enjoy hanging out with this group as if they were my friends. Like I, there was one moment I think this week where it was raining and I was in, in the cafe and I was like, Oh yeah, this is just like home. Like people put on YouTube videos to like the, the chill vibes to study to. And I wish like, there's gotta be one of just hanging out in LeBlanc studying there because that, that is just like a happy place for me. And so spending time here, getting to, realize new facets of these characters on the second playthrough i certainly don't mind the length of that yeah um but yeah it, it's, it's up all, to each person yeah it's up to each person and it's all about for me it's all about like does does the thing outstay its welcome right or does it need more and i think the persona is well suited to its size and and you can see that in like you know untitled this is getting off topic and i apologize but i'm <laughs> vamping while you're looking uh untitled goose game right is like 15 to 20 dollars and that game is like an hour and a half to two hours. And like, I know people who are like, oh man, this game is way too short. Like, I thought that that game was a little bit short. But then I know other people who are like, oh, that game is only two hours. Great. I can beat it in a day, you know? Like, there's, yeah. so there's like, that, that, I think that choice is really personal also. And it's all about just like, does the, does the container like fit, does the container fit the contents in, in a weird way of like, does this actually match what is happening here? Are they padding it out? And I don't really think, I think by the nature Persona 5 tells its story, I don't really think they're padding it in any way. And therefore, I don't think it is what I would call too long. Yeah, I I agree with that. That's fair. Um, Mine, so I will look up uh, base Persona 5, but it's it's just much further back in my library and the PS, (laughs) the PlayStation app is not great at searching like that. Um, The Persona 5 Royal Platinum has a 17% completion rating, which is pretty good for a platinum yeah that's got to be pretty high uh especially for you know there there are definitely i think like the spider-mans and the god of wars of the world have like 40 50 percent uh completion sure. but for a hundred plus hour rpg 17 percent getting the platinum nonetheless is is pretty good yeah anyway anyway yeah uh just to go through a couple other comments it's a good topic. Uh, d- yes very much so uh dexter said uh, the Waikiki beach scene was cool for me because side note, I was born in Hawaii and three years ago we took a trip back. And when we went to Waikiki, uh, I got garlic shrimp from a food stand. And then that same thing happened on my date with on in the game, which is just <laughs> a wonderful little parallel. Um, also I'm going by the username. So apologies if I'm, I'm, uh, butchering this, but E, uh, E Lek said the Hawaii trip is the first instance of arguably my main complaint of persona five Royal. And that is sometimes you have a complete lack of saving opportunities. You cannot save it all during the trip. Well, not a big problem here is the trip is pretty quick and not a lot of important things occur. This issue happens a few more times later in the game. I'll leave it at that. As a big RPG player, I like to save as much as possible. I also work during the day, so my gaming time uh, takes place at night and there's nothing like wanting to go to bed but not being able to save for 30 plus minutes. Thankfully, my girlfriend is super rad and understands. Uh, as these are my first forays into JRPGs, is there a reason for this? Finally, uh, make these episodes as long as you like. I listen and watch during work, so I don't mind at all. <laughs> yeah, um, I think there's like, what, there's that one moment where you're walking around talking to people by the beach that you can probably save, and then that's, ba- that's otherwise it's just cutscene. I agree. I don't like when any game does this. I don't think it's n- only a problem with JRPGs either, like you know, not to disparage his name or get into his games, but Kojima does this, right, a lot, <laughs> I feel like, with his games where he'll just have, like, 40-minute cutscenes, and you're like, okay, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> and that's, again, not speaking of the game specifically, just, like, that practice is No, annoying. totally. There was some of the ending of Death Stranding where I'm like, can I... Can I go like i i was supposed to have dinner soon <laughs> yeah and yeah. i'm like i'm i'm enjoying what's happening and interested but also yeah i'm very hungry and and you see that in like i'm playing through i'm still playing through yakuza like a dragon right now too and uh without spoilers there was a scene where you're interrogating someone um and it's basically just this huge long exposition dump of a conversation really it's good but it's just like really long and that scene has 
two or three different points where the cut se- where the conversation will end and your next objective will be to talk to that person and you can walk around and go places but you can't like leave the immediate vicinity you're in because it's always like go back and talk to this person and i was like why do they do this like two or three times and i realized it's literally just to let you save between right uh, like it's okay. literally i didn't want to give you a 20 minute cutscene, so they made it three seven minute cutscenes instead for this exact <laughs> reason i'm pretty sure and like yeah yeah it's annoying <laughs> it's just annoying yeah it's uh, it's something that i think this game and just games in general like it there is no obviously i'm i'm sure there are technical reasons why some games don't allow saves like constantly throughout a game sure but in terms of just like a pure accessibility level and i don't even mean accessibility for people who are you know um can't play games tr- with a traditional controller necessarily um th- it just like on an ease of play level for people it is so nice to be able to save when you can because life yeah. gets in the way yeah um, but, that's uh, why uh the best invention of modern console generations is uh being able to just like hit the suspend button and walk away <laughs> it's great yeah i i love it so so much um i did find the original base persona 5 uh, the platinum trophy because that game requires essentially multiple playthroughs unless you do a perfect like buy a guide run for the sure. first time only has like a 2.3 percent completion for the platinum okay um but in terms of uh the seeing the ending 30 percent of people have seen the ending of the base persona 5 that's a lot yeah. like for a hundred and plus hour rpg that feels like a lot to me it is 30%. yeah it's because i don't y- think the average is much higher than 50 right so i think like, it might even be less yeah be right so yeah. like the fact that like a hundred plus hour rpg is not doesn't have much shorter of a completion rate anyway we spent a lot of time on this we did <laughs> it's it, it's fun to get into the minutia around the game but we should get into the game itself also i tried to find the average amount of people who who beat a game and it gave me the average gamer age so i'll i'll google this later for uh for another episode <laughs> Man, we uh, really got sidetracked on this one. <laughs> we did. Anyway, let's. I really, you know, after you complimenting the beginning, just really threw you off. <laughs> we needed to balance it out. Perhaps that was my plan all along. Anyway, let's get into the week of September 13th through September 19th in Persona 5 Royal. Uh, and this week is a pretty heavy story week for the most part. And then there's like randomly a little bit of free time in there. So we'll, we'll bridge that as we get to it. But this is the like fundamental uh introduction to uh okumura's palace we get our mission start uh things begin but also unfortunately we go through a lot of pain and strife with morgana Uh, i'm really glad this week lined up the way it did in our schedule yeah because it feels like a very good sort of like bookended here's a little bite-sized story for the week yes yeah it uh i think it really uh capitalizes on the themes and stuff that we've been talking about and obviously us talking about a little more because we knew how important the Morgana sort of frustrations right. are. Um, but that all comes to a head this week and we'll, we'll get there in due time, but let's start with uh, September 13th, uh, which it, it has a very small bit of Royal edition here, which I thought was interesting was just like you and Ryuji hanging out. And then Kasumi runs into you at the train station and is like, I should go to like, let's all go to school together. And it was just like, Oh, that's cute. But again, not like, massively important to the story yeah isn't it isn't it funny you can always tell when a royal edition if you played the base game you can always tell when a royal edition is about to happen because you're like i don't recognize this camera angle yep oh it's (laughs) It's totally camera angles yes yeah that happens so much yeah you're like this specific shot of shibuya station is different something is about to happen with kasumi (laughs) yep it's wild how much my brain retains that of the original game. Like, yeah, I couldn't yeah. tell you those things, but the moment I get to them, it's like, yeah, that's not, that doesn't belong. Oh, it's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I like this moment too, because like you said, it's not very important. It's just like, I think what it is, is it's just like folding her into existing with the other members of your party a little bit more, right? It's yes. just like, oh yeah, Ryuji and Kasumi and you walk to school together. Cool. Yeah. You know? It, especially after Hawaii, it's like the whole group is now interacted with her as a group to a certain extent so we yeah. are sowing the seeds of eventually getting to see her in uh the metaverse and i just yeah. want to know how that happens because i'm very right. excited um but anyway uh we get to school and of course the big thing that they're all uh summoned into a last minute assembly because uh jumping off of the events that ended last week uh they announced to the school of the principal's death 
uh, which clearly the whole school kind of knew already had happened. There's a lot of like rumor mongering happening throughout the crowd as he's get, uh, as they're getting on stage to announce these things. Uh, we get a fun flash forward after that where Sai is discussing um, basically like how they could have the the data on things, uh, thinking, oh no, there's no way Makoto could have been involved with such a thing. Um, a, a cute little moment there. Um, yeah. And then basically just... Um, wants to know a little bit more about us having anything to do with either the principal's case, which we very much are like, we did not. Uh, right. And then, then we get into a little bit of a Kumara and we get a level up with Sai. Uh, I yeah. don't think there's anything else major from that conversation. No, it's just, it's, it's really just like kind of establishing the last few weeks as like a, like side in, in between, right? Yes. Because yeah. usually you get these side bits that then start, end one section and start the next. And this time we kind of got, this is like an extra one where it's like, okay, let's recap what just happened because there was a lot of little other stuff. And then let's get into the palace. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm kind of going to like bunch all of this together and then we can we can dive into it. But okay. after school, the, the gang meets to discuss the data that they, you know, uh, we were able to obtain. Uh, we start getting a little bit into the principal talk of things. Uh, Yusuke sort of, you know, puts the idea together um, that their Sai is essentially looking for like a common thread through these changes, uh, and they and you know some of the the changes of heart and the things, and and they found a common beneficiary, as he said. Uh, Okumura has been benefiting. Uh, from scandals and resignations of competitors and things like that. Uh, and Futabo went so far as to confirm that Okumura has a palace. <laughs> um, and so he's at the top of the rankings. It seems like, oh, this is the perfect fit. We should just go after Okumura. Uh, but Yusuke, of course, mentions a thing that we've talked about on the show that, like, they don't immediately go to act on this because it is, like, do we necessarily know he is evil? Do we know he right. is doing things with a malicious intent? Um there's there's that question of stepping into a situation that you're not already a part of and and so they want to figure that out uh also worried a little bit about how popular the phantom thieves are and the attention on them and that's something we'll see come up a little bit throughout the week uh but as the whole gang is talking morgana and ryuji get into a fight um morgana's really mad at ryuji for essentially getting conceited being focused on how popular the phantom thieves are uh using it to get girls uh morgana says quote that he's more admirable than some carnal blonde monkey uh yeah. which is just a hell of an insult um morgana is just like i'm gonna go take care of okumura on my own uh and uh i i wrote with a uh, ryuji uh in response to ryuji getting some mad. i wrote dude you're fighting with a cat uh in my notes um <laughs> But anyway, Morgana leaves. Morgana is just out for the moment, wants to prove that he's not useless. He can he can be not just important to the group, but important on his own, that he has a purpose and, and fundamentally has the strength to do things on his own. Um, and as he's leaving, uh, our sad Morgana runs past Haru, who, of course, we've been seeing uh, throughout the weeks. I think we finally get her named in this moment. Uh, or not in this moment, this week. But... Um, we, we see them pass, and, and obviously that, that hints at maybe a little something. Uh, before I get into the next couple scenes, anything you wanted to, like, touch on with that big conversation? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this conversation is really interesting because it's a lot of... Con like, the Morgana Ryuji thing where Morgana runs out is... Came to a head, right, after a lot of, like, her, Morgana not feeling... Morgana feeling useless and him kind of struggling with his position in the Phantom Thieves, and that's interesting. But, like, and has been set up well, I think. But the thing that I think is really interesting about this conversation is that they now have the public telling them that they want Okumura caught or whatever, or changed. And they also have this data from Sai's computer being like, Okumura seems to be shady. And suddenly there's this really big turning point in the group of, like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing what they're doing? And they even say, like, it's starting to get, like, scary for them looking online and seeing people, like, ravenously calling for this person's heart to be changed, which was never a thing that they had before. And, like, I think that's a really interesting moment in the history of this group where Ryuji, you know, is just kind of caught up in it and is like, yeah, like, the the public wants it. Let's just do it. We gotta do it. They want it. And it's like, that's never been the reason that they've done any of this before, right? They've never changed a heart 
like they've had requests, but they've never changed a heart just because people are like, yeah, change his heart, he sucks, you know? And so like, suddenly they're getting caught up a little bit in this popularity of like, you know, what, what are their motivations for changing these hearts? Why are they doing this? Why are they looking at this person specifically? Are they, beho they're not beholden to some poll on the internet that they didn't even set up, right? But suddenly it's like, oh yeah, you have to do it, the public asked. And I think there's a lot of just like really interesting sort of themes around this moment where it's like, you know, they're not, like, they're getting caught up and they're excited about the popularity, but they're also sort of being like, wait, like, this is, this is escalating beyond what, us. And yeah. that conversation continues throughout the week, I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's, I think it ties back to that. And that's why I want to make sure not to, to miss the moment of Yusuke kind of being like, are we doing this for the right reasons? Because as you right. said, that is like, that has stopped them from jumping into a palace before on just like a personal level. Um, yeah. When the, even things like um, Madarame was like, okay, we know he might be a bad dude, but we don't even have all, the, this is before Yusuke was obviously part of it, but like we don't even know the full extent of like, is he really a bad guy? Um, right. And yeah, now that it is at this like publicly heightened level, that's something that is, I, I think you're right, it comes up this week, but I feel like it, I could be misremembering, but I do feel like that was a theme that carries forward. Um, yeah, and, and it, it does. Yeah. And it's it's especially a theme that continues forward kind of as the as this palace escalates and the next palace continues and that sort of stuff. Totally. Um, and so just to, to wrap up the, the end of the day, uh, we Morgana has left and we'll, we'll get a little bit of Morgana, but before the end of the day, uh, Sai and Akechi are having a conversation kind of about how uh, bad things are at the moment. Um, Akechi really is, is judgy of Sai and basically tells her, like, he knows he's not in a great place, like, the public is kind of turning against him. He's not going to go on TV too much because he doesn't want to keep turning people against him but because he, he's not going to lie. But he also is like, you're beginning to sound a bit like the Phantom Thieves at this point in terms of her uh, willingness to maybe not play by the rules to get the results that they're looking for. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and so we start to see the other side, not crumbling, but like having th this internal it, conflict as well. It's a rift that hadn't been there, right? Yeah. It, it Suddenly it's like, oh, Akechi and Sai are maybe not quite on the same page about some stuff anymore, which is like, you know, it's not like they had always been on the same page, but it's starting to, it's setting up some stuff, right? In that it's like, oh, that's, that's new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and it's, I like, it is an interesting thing where we are, we have all these flashbacks with Psy, or flash forwards. We don't have them with Akechi. Right. Uh, so, <clears throat> at some point there is, you know, we, we obviously are seeing them as individuals as well, yeah. which I appreciate. But yeah, but the, the end of the evening, uh, we see Morgana... Uh, getting beaten up by some robots. Uh, yeah, you in, know, just in, like you do. In the metaverse, we assume. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, that, <laughs> I'd hope. You would hope. Uh, otherwise, we have a lot of questions about the, the reality of this game. But uh, no, it's luckily a mystery we won't have to hold on to for a week with everyone. We'll, we'll get yeah. to the answer of what that is. But it is... I do like the way that the game introduces this. Like, you probably know what he's doing, but you also... It, it's enough of a mystery that you're like, what's going on here? Um, well, it's also it's also cool because it's the first time that like someone goes into the metaverse without you, right? Where you're like, oh, like they Morgana just did it. They can just <laughs> Morgana go. just like okay, yeah. Um, I like that it gives the group more autonomy because it, it's the same thing with like Futaba being like, oh yeah, I found out he has a palace already. Like, right? I do love that not everything has to stem from Joker. Yeah, and they also, this palace does that too, like we see later in the week when they like, they're like, oh yeah, we already figured out the keyword, it's fine. Where it's just like, they're not like, they don't have, like we've been through this routine like four times or whatever already. Like they don't have to belabor all of these points every single time, I think is very smart. Yes, yeah, it would be a bit much if on our sixth palace we're like, let's spend a week and a half trying to find out what it may look like as a palace. And then, right. yeah, doing X, Y, and Z. It's nice the way it, continues to build on what it's done already yeah uh moving on from there to september 14th a little bit of a quieter day uh, morgana is still absent from the group hasn't come home um 
you know, Futaba's hoping to hear more about Morgana, but we, we just haven't seen him at all. Uh, we, we text with the group. Nobody has seen Morgana as well. And Futaba even feels like the group is being a bit too cold about Morgana's absence at this point. Yeah. Um, which is... Futaba, Futaba throughout this whole week is, like, the person most compassionate for Morgana. Yes. Right? Yeah. Futaba's the one that's, like... We, like we have to find more, like, what are you guys doing? Like, this is, this, like, our friend is missing, you know? Like, yeah. Futaba is definitely the one that is, like, leading, the, carrying the torch in terms of, like, take this seriously. Yeah, well, and again, it plays on, I really, obviously we've harped on this, but I really like the characterization of Futaba because, again, it makes that point of, just because she was isolated for so long and very much shut herself away doesn't mean she doesn't know how to be a human being to other people like they don't play into the trope of the shut-in who doesn't know how to communicate like she deeply cares and she is able to relate to the group and and this is another facet of that where she is like no we need to care about morgana he is our friend yeah Um, and i i I really appreciate that but anyway uh the the school day goes on we get a a quiz question about pawn chops um, it's just such a. F- I, I had to put this in the notes because it's so funny. Because it's one of those moments where the teacher's like, "Boy, that Akumara. Have you heard about that Akumara? I heard about Akumara Foods doing some shady stuff." Anyway, related to that, what's the difference between a pawn shop and a, a a secondhand store? And then you answer that question, and they're like, "That's correct." Now Akumara Foods. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> also, what? Why is that something you're taught in high school? Pawn it's shops never lesson. came up in high school. Is it? <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Uh, I've never once been to a pawn shop or watched Pawn Stars. Uh, anyway. Oh, that show is great. I've I mean, heard good things. I just have never it's, seen it. It's terrible and great at sure. the same time. Anyway, uh, we... <laughs> I'll always find a way to sidetrack us with the TV show. Anyway, yeah. uh, we go straight home because Futaba is like, hey, uh, just really still worried about things wants you to come straight home we get another shot of morgana being chased by robots but someone else is there as well yeah um this is this is right you saw basically at this point by the end of the week we know it's haru like kind of save morgana in the first scene and now you get this like very funny action scene of like shots of food or morgana and haru's just legs like yeah. running around by robots it's super funny it's really funny but also like at this point in the game especially with royal i guess and of course we're not spoiling because we know where the rest of the week goes but like you have more possible culprits of who it could be like obviously the game makes it clear that mm. it's haru but i guess if you were really uncertain like we do yeah. know kasumi goes into the metaverse at some point right we haven't seen sai you know part of that maybe he somehow like side chased down morgana and ended up in the sure like it could have been a few people which i guess i appreciate but it's hard anyway uh then we get a little bit more information uh just to kind of like parallel what's going on with morgana uh we get some news about okumura hq being broken into uh broken windows uh you know disturbances there so clearly there's some problems and we feel like it's best to go investigate what's going on there yeah. Um, and, and that wraps up the, the second day of this week, the 14th. I do like well, the, the pace this week goes at. Yes, the pace of the week is good, but the 14th ends in the saddest possible way, if you remember this. So you get an evening. It's not really an evening. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Where you get to, you just have to go to bed. But I don't, like, hopefully people did this, because you can do this, I think, two or three times during the week, and it is so, so unbearably sad because you can walk around to all the things in your room and, like, check them like you would where Morgana would usually say something, or, like, go to the, the TV to watch a thing. And instead of getting, like, the, I should go to sleep, what it is is, like, you'll walk over to the TV and you'll and you'll click on the TV and it'll say, there are claw marks on the, on the legs of this table. I miss Morgana. And then you'll, like, <laughs> go over to, like, the, uh, the like, the, the tool table or whatever and be like, and you'll just be like, Morgana used to take care of me. I'm worried about Morgana. And yeah. it's just like everything you click on has like a unique line. And it's like so tragic. It's, it's so real tragic. Dark. Yeah. What I, so what I really like about this week is what I was thinking about as we were playing, uh, as I was playing it the whole week was like, this reminds me of a season of a TV show, like going back to that metaphor for the game, when someone in the main group turns dark or betrays the group kind of like the dark willow season of buffy or something like that where it's like someone goes dark 
but it's only a week here in the game. Like we 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 don't have to drag it out for two or three months. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's real sad at points. It's it's a real rough week. Uh. Without yeah. without Morgana, suddenly we miss Morgana telling us to go to bed. Um. Yeah. But anyway, September fifteenth, we rush through the the school day. It doesn't matter at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. School happened, I guess, that day. And we, we head over to Okumura's HQ. And as you said, we um, we know that, you know, what the palace is. We're able to get in. We don't have to worry about all of that setup. So we... Outer space. As as you would assume. Uh, because of the Big Bang. It, it's a reference to space, they say at one point. And I think someone's like... I think Anna goes, well, it doesn't only have to be that or something. I think... is it a is it a sex joke? Uh, I don't know. I okay. missed that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, it was just a very, like, specific joke, and I was like, I think it's a sex joke, but I can't tell. Anyway, uh, we get into the space station, but before we do, as we're hopping into the metaverse, there's someone in the background. It's that yeah. darn Akechi. Akechi kind of, like, is nearby when you go into the metaverse and gets a little exclamation point over his head, so he clearly sees you or it's unclear at this point right but he definitely sees you as you go into the metaverse in some capacity yes yeah he is aware of this moment but to the extent we don't know yeah um because we've never talked to someone around us when we go into the metaverse yeah the only other instances that we've had previously have been like on getting caught up in it when she was too close in moments like that but then also you know, you have gone in in the middle of Shibuya and people haven't been brought in with you. So it's it's unclear, like, exactly what happens with Akechi here, but he definitely sees you while you're doing it. Exactly. Capacity. Yeah, that is probably the best way to, to kind of cap that. But at the moment, yeah. uh, we head into the metaverse. We don't suddenly have a new party member with us, so we don't know what happened to Akechi at that point. Uh, but we do get into this space station. You don't have a new party member with... I love that. T- that's the idea of just like, oh yeah, there's just a new party member. Don't worry about it. This is just to catch you there and he's in the party now. No, I mean like, th- that would be my assumption is if he did get caught up, you would see him. You would like, see him in some way. Whoa, yeah. what's going on here? But yeah, we don't see him. So we move into the space station. It's like a movie, as I believe Yusuke says, and they're, you know... They're, they're in this crazy sci-fi futuristic space setting. And though this palace yeah. does get a lot of crap, I do like the setting itself. The setting's cool. It's really cool. Because it's it's sort of the continuing escalation, right? Yeah. Of, of all of these places where, like, the first three places are, like, pretty just... Or like, the first two places are pretty just, like, hey, it's a building. This building turned into a different building, right? Mm-hmm. And then the third place is, like, a bank flying over an area is, like, novel. And then the fourth place is a room becomes a huge desert and like that's kind of expanding even further and now this one is you're literally in space looking at the earth through a window above you is like i love that i love that they keep escalating sort of what a palace can be and how it can warp that space yes more and more it's super cool yeah they do they do a as you said several times they're like escalation is i think i think this game does phenomenally well uh, yeah throughout but yeah, we're we're in the space station, which of course is a simulation of the Big Bang Burger HQ, Okumura's uh, HQ, and we get the sense that he is abusing his employees. Uh, everyone, right. the the metaverse version of all the people presumably working in the big office building we were just outside of, um, are mindless robotic drones who are just going about their day. Uh, they're basically being told like, hey. Uh, you you know, continue to do your work. If you want to quit, you can, but you won't be paid. And like you, were, it, it essentially gives this idea that they are just very easily replaceable robots that don't really matter uh, and are just yeah. part of the assembly line to get the the success that he's looking for. Yeah, and you get a good moment between re- again a good moment kind of showing the conflict within the group in a really nice way of. Ryuji being like, see, he's a jerk. This is evidence. Like, we're doing this. And Futaba, again, being the one to be like, we are not here to change Okumura's heart. We are here to find Morgana. Mm -hmm. That is our priority, is we are after our friend. And, like, Ryuji continues to get caught up in this sort of, like, let's get him, let's get him. And Futaba has to ground everybody, or ground him again, and be like, no, we came in here with a very specific goal that was not to change a heart. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll, we'll see that continue to pop up as we explore just a little bit of the space station. We eventually get to a, a roadblock where there's a door 
uh, that needs biometrics required to pass by it. And we are just stuck at this point. So we're like, oh, well, Morgana must be behind this point then. Um, um, right. because unless it's cat biometrics, we should be okay. Um, so presumably we, we should be able to find Morgana in the space that we've been. Um, and as we're, we're having this, uh, conversation, someone calls out to us, uh, and it's a, a woman we might, we think might be the one causing all the deaths. Perhaps this is that other metaverse user. Uh, Cause she has a black mask. Exactly. Uh, and I, I love this scene. Um, because I think it is so bad intentionally, <laughs> like th- they are so not scary or intimidating whatsoever, but that is really what Morgana wanted. And like, I can just see the other side of this. So before I get too deep into that, uh, we, we, we meet this person and Morgana appears beside her. Um, and essentially he, he calls her beauty thief again further adding to all this uh, and then and she calls herself beauty thief beauty fee- thief they keep repeating themselves uh <laughs> she starts trying to like lecture them about the their badness and things uh she's not really great at it and they they have this whole and that's why I, like it's so awkward of a scene yeah. um my, I, yeah, there's a moment where she's like calling people out and then she calls someone out and she's like what was I supposed to say? Yeah, what was your thing? That? Like, Morgana's, like, very clearly, like, coached her on what each person did wrong. Yeah, that's what I love, is, like, if, if this were, like, a sitcom, this would have cut away to, like, them rehearsing a scene in the background of, like, how to do this <laughs> conversation. But, yeah, it. what I love about it, too, is, like, Beauty Thief is, like, a really bad name, also, in comparison mm-hmm. to everyone else's. And that was a funny thing where my girlfriend was watching me play, and she was like, is that really her name? And I'm like, it's supposed to be bad. <laughs> But they like yeah. she doesn't know the difference, so they keep going going along with it. Um, so anyway, we're having this sort of like back and forth with all of them, and uh, she is able to pass through the biometric door uh, and opens it up. But you know, as as she and Morgana are essentially going to go try and and do things on their own, but there is a massive amount of more robots uh, ahead of them, and they've been ambushed at the door. So rather than continue trying to go. We've completed our goal, as you said, uh, despite Ryuji's request to keep going. Uh, so we we leave, we, we jet out of there and go and meet back at the hideout. Um, we we return there. Is there anything else about that scene that you want to mention before I keep going? I didn't want to like no, just keep at this, I mean, it's at this point, it's interesting at this point that you, you know, you very clearly as a player know it's, if you don't know her name yet, it's very clearly the pink haired girl right haru at this point but the the phantom thieves don't necessarily know who she is yet and have to figure that out and like that's a very funny little thing i i think it's really interesting that you have an interaction with morgana and morgana is basically like i replaced you i don't need you and like you're trying to go there to save morgana and morgana is just like totally like obstinate independent doesn't want anything to do with you still yeah um and I, I think that's just an interesting sort of pull, push and pull there, for yeah. sure. It that continues. Yes, yeah. It's a really fun dynamic that continues as we go along. Uh, the the group gets back, back home, and they're kind of like, we need to maybe find out who this person is. Um, they they feel like they may know her to a certain extent, and so they're like, let's go look in the Shujin yearbooks um, to find who this girl may be. Uh, we need to know how she got through those biometric doors. Um, and as they're continuing to talk about those things, we also, of course, also know that, um, things are, uh, really, really being pushed on the Phantom Thieves to go after Okumura, um, to the extent, like, people are getting mad that they haven't fixed it yet. This is, I think, a really good, I think this is a really important thing, kind of, that is a trend of this whole Okumura thing and the poll and the Phantom Thieves popularity is, like, this isn't a fantasy thing, right? Like, the internet does this. We know, like, we know that the internet does this, that they they will, you know, 
crusade against th they'll be like oh there was this terrible crime and we have a half blurry photo of a human being who might be the culprit let's find everything we know about them and dox them and like do our own sort of like like internet detective thing that can ruin people's lives if because they're just like not everyone has the right information the internet gets caught up in the snowball where they just like are a ton of people just rushing and sometimes people who mean well just rushing after a thing and like that's not a JRPG fantasy concept. And I think it's really, really smart that, you know, the group is like, wow, the internet looks like really unnaturally fired up right now about like whatever this Okumura thing is. And it's very odd. And I think that it's very healthy for the fan thieves to acknowledge that, to say, oh, like th these people that are online right now are not necessarily like don't have the same goals as us necessarily and don't have necessarily have our best interests in heart. They're just like a mob now. They're just a ravenous mob that is like watching this like a sport and wants entertainment. And I think that that is a really, really uh, topical thing for <laughs> them to tie into this otherwise fantastical story. Oh, for I sure. I think it is really interesting. I think it's, it's Yeah. Yeah, well, and it's it's obviously uh, a story that they originally put out, you know, now four years ago, and certainly right. isn't any less relevant for that. Sure. So yeah, it's a a really interesting look at it, and and yeah, even where we're at with all the information we have, the group is still not settled on. Oh, we need to go change Okumura's heart at yeah. this point. So yeah, we're we're gonna see that continue to play out. But uh, as we move on to uh, the next day, September sixteenth. Uh, we do, of course, uh, find Haru in the yearbook, and she happens to have Okumura's last name. Who could have <gasps> predicted? Not related, I bet. No, it's got to be a. It's the other Okumura family. Um, anyway, we go and uh, try to chat up Haru after this, uh, and I love this moment because uh, Makoto just comes over and is like, "I'm just gonna just get right to the point." Uh, very makoto yeah we met in the metaverse you're that person what's going on um and we're it, it's a really cute really great moment um but we're essentially trying to because haru's real quick i love that moment too because haru's so friendly yep like disarmingly friendly makoto is like super serious about it like gotcha moment and haru's like oh i love you're your that, outfit you're those people oh, wow, you found me quick. You looked great in that biker outfit. And Makoto's yeah. like, what? Uh, oh, uh, uh, let's not talk about that. And it's like, she's just so disarmingly kind right yeah. away. It, it's really great. There's no sort of like, as you said, it's meant to be a gotcha moment and neither side plays it like that a yeah. after it, it, like the the wall breaks down. It's really funny. Um, but yeah, we, we essentially are trying to get her to team up with us. Like we, we think, you know, trying to do things at, at different ends of the... If we end up having the same goal, it, it's just a foolish way to go. We could combine our forces, obviously also trying to get Morgana back into the group, and she is not for it. Like, she, again, she, as you said, she's very kind, but she is like, you're not supporting your friend, and right. that's not really what a Phantom Thief should do, and doesn't accept our offer to essentially, you know, bring these groups together. And so we're, yeah. we're left split for the moment still. Yeah, and at this point, she mentions her motivations are that she'd heard rumors about her dad, right, and the CEO, and, like, wanted to help it, like, stop him being, like, mean to his company and his employees and that sort of thing. And that's the motivation that she says at this point, though we find out very quickly that that's not the real motivation. Exactly. Day. Yeah, we we get a little bit of uh, her father being very cruel to, to Haru, um, yeah. Seeming to have uh, forced her into an arranged marriage situation um, that she doesn't necessarily seem to be in favor of, though we don't, you know, have the full extent just yet. Uh, but obviously he is very preoccupied with bettering his career, bettering the advancement of the family name. That is sort yeah. of his main goal at this point. Yeah. Marrying her to somebody who will be beneficial to them because of business ties. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not so much because of the best things for her. Right. So anyway, uh, we we learn a little bit more about uh, Haru's personal side of it, which of course always comes into play when we get into these palace beginnings. Uh, but we also 
get a little bit more of the gang and they're, they're realizing Memento's requests are, are getting answered and, and solved, but they had no part of it. And so they're thinking, oh, the two of them must be going to Memento's to train, to do some of these things, to prove the power of the Phantom Thieves. We should go stake out Memento's tomorrow. And there's some back and forth because some people are like, I think mostly Ryuji, we shouldn't just hang around and wait and, and do that. Like we, we might miss them. They might not be in there that day. And we're like, this is probably our best bet at this point to fight. Right. Um, because we need to apologize <laughs> uh, is kind of the point at that point. But uh, we get forward. I don't think there's anything else that happens that evening. No, not really. There's more, I think, sad, like, I miss Morgana things you can select around your room. But besides yes. that, no. Very true. Uh, so we get to September 17th on our Memento's uh, stakeout. And uh, as you, you have put in our, our notes, Haru is super nice and Ryuji sucks. Uh, we yeah. get Haru being very kind for the most part. And uh, she even gets apologetic about things and, and ruins yeah. Morgana's facade. <laughs> yeah, because they explain, right, that like if you're posting to the Memento or to the fan site, Say, with your own account like you'll get tracked down really easily and get caught right if you're like you they can just track you and like so sh- they, they frame this as a like we're here to help you and she kind of immediately realizes that and like accepts that and morgana is still very being being very stubborn and we are hoping to though bridge that gap uh, because he realizes we're here for him like we are we are trying to make the effort to show that we care about him and yeah. you know some of the group tries to convey that, and then it comes around to Ryuji, and Ryuji botches his apology so Ryuji badly. Ryuji sucks so bad. It's a real bad time for Ryuji, yeah. Um, though I've come around to him on this playthrough, he's really a jerk in the, in this. He's a total jerk. Yeah. But, like, still very in his character. Oh, like, yeah, this yeah. Is, this is the thing I still like about Ryuji, is, like, all this hot-headedness between him and Morgana, like, their relationship feels very consistent throughout all of this which i appreciate because it it's not like they're just manufacturing conflict to manufacture conflict like they did seed this in and ryuji is like in character for being this way and i i think it works throughout all this oh absolutely from minute one he's given morgana crap uh it just has escalated to a point and very understandably morgana doesn't want to be treated that way uh and so ryuji you know ruins this apology basically is like it's okay if you're useless like we right. you know we can still accept you back in uh and morgana's like screw this turns into a cat bus and uh takes haru away and you have to go through this short little uh chase through mementos uh going from mm-hmm. like point to point where it's like wow we'll trap him in this dead end and then oh he's a bus so he just hits us and moves away um but eventually it gets into such a frenzied state that Morgana crashes somewhere in the in this mementos floor. Um, oh, I, I do love at this point uh, to get away. Haru uses one of those really, really bad. What's that thing over there? Sort of distraction techniques, which is wonderful. Uh, yeah. And feels very Haru. Um, but anyway, we we get this whole chase scene through mementos. Eventually he crashes. They run away. Uh, again and we're back in the real world we get a little bit more of haru uh being confronted uh this is shortly after we've all left she's getting confronted by this terrible terrible jerk of a man who is as we learn uh her uh betrothed to be and he's pretty terrible from minute one Um, yeah very controlling creep yeah very gross very controlling um accuses her of being with other guys um grabs her morgana tries to step in to protect her but of course is just a cat uh and gets kicked aside awfully by this man uh and luckily the gang do they hear morgana or do they hear morgana is my question yes like is it is it an internal (laughs) hearing of morgana's voice no i think they literally hear morgana okay the way it the way the audio came through i couldn't tell if it was like a uh, we're connected as thieves and we sense this nearby. Or no, I think, th- I think okay. they're just like down the street. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, so anyway, they're down the street from this very important story scene happening. And they hear Morgana's cries of pain because Morgana is dejected on the side and thinking, maybe I am useless. Maybe I am worth nothing and, and all these things. And they rush over um, 
to to go help uh this guy tries to be like oh no you see what you think you're hearing and looking at is not in fact a bad man being bad it is totally something different but we know the truth we've 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 met enough bad men to know sure um and we confront the guy um he basically says i'm going to tell haru's dad about this and that he won't forget their faces which is very specific uh but he says he won't forget their faces we learn he's her fiance um and she can't get out of this this sort of arrangement at the moment uh so we bring her back to the cafe let her rest up for a bit she wakes up um the gang is catching up with morgana through all of this and as she awakens we get this sort of reconciliation moment where haru reminds morgana in sort of her unfiltered way of like oh yeah don't you remember all those times you were saying how much you liked being a part of the group and how much it meant to you and and how much it felt like it was fulfilling to your life and that you love this group you should be back with them like stop this fighting we should all just get along um and he sort of realizes he's he's lying to himself uh we do get mentioned that she has formed a contract with her persona so there was some doubt the day before when morgana had mentioned she was a persona user right um but we do also learn that essentially it's so weak at this point that it's not like taking corporeal form yeah um which is an interesting uh i think this is the first time we've had a moment like that it's basically without going too far ahead it's basically an excuse to have her already have an outfit, but yes. also get an awakening scene later. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like kind of the reasoning behind it, but that's fine. No. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Cause I wrote down, you know, even forgetting some of what comes after I was like, Oh no, we missed her, her persona scene where she rips the mask off her face and it's bloody and cool. And then it was like, Oh wait, no, we'll, we'll get that eventually. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we get a little bit more of, of her interest in this. And I think she says something that really ties into kind of the overall theme of why we end up going after people and, and why the Phantom Thieves feel true in what they're doing. And, and she says, uh, talking kind of about the arranged marriage and all that, she's like, she thought an adult with responsibilities would make the right decision. Or, or mm-hmm. it, because they made this decision, it had to be right. But she's right. learning that it's not. Um, so anyway... The group reconciles. Haru stays over at Futaba's for the evening. Uh, Morgana is tired, back with the group, and sleeps on our chest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and makes um, for an uncomfortable evening. Yes. And and this scene, so this scene is also really important, just this whole discussion scene, because you get the real motive, like, you get Morgana's stuff, which is like, finally you know why Morgana's been behaving this way. Morgana feels, is scared of being rejected, right, but really does want to be with the group. And it's like, a very relatable conflict and very sad and it's it's nice that they reconcile and actually talk about this stuff the other thing that's important here i think and we've talked about this basically with every palace so far is what is their motivation for changing the heart right because the moderame thing they were like well do we really want it like is it really our place to change moderame's heart right like that's not is that really on us right um and then it made became personal where yusuke asked them to right asked for help and then it's the same thing with Kanashiro, right? Kanashiro, they're like, well, we're just like looking for this like this criminal because Makoto is making us. And then it becomes personal because Makoto's in danger and suddenly they have to. And like, that's the same thing with this, where Okuma is at the top of the polls. Okuma has all this shady stuff that might be going on through size data that they stole. Okuma has all this stuff kind of swirling around them, but they're still at this point, like we don't know if we should go after Okumura, like, this is getting kind of weird, why are we doing this, yada, 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 and they're in conflict, but then the moment that Haru is like, I'm not doing this because of the way that Okumura, or my dad is treating his employees, I'm doing this because of this arranged marriage that I want to get out of, this is my, per- I feel in danger, and we've seen the danger in firsthand, right? That suddenly, that's the motivation of this palace, is it's not do it because of the polls it's haru is in danger and we need to protect her in the same way that kamoshida was threatening us and we needed to protect ourselves and like that completely changes it where it's like oh yeah that is a full-on good reason to do this not because the internet is telling us to do this and i think that's a really important again they they very consistently in this game give the group 
good motivations for doing what they do. And I think that this is just a very important moment that it's like, oh yeah, this is why we're doing this this time. No, absolutely. It, it bridges that gap that I think has been so important to the reason they went after past palaces and is the reason they're doing it here. Uh, and I think you you nailed it, so I'm not going to try to just say the same words in a slightly different order. <laughs> um, moving on from there, uh, we do get a level up, of course, with Morgana, uh, yep. which I would hope so after he makes it such a painful night of sleep. But mm-hmm. uh, September 18th, we get to the last major like story day for this. Um, Haru spends the night uh, at the Futaba Sojuro household. Uh, we all have a, a breakfast in the cafe together. Uh, Sojuro is like, you brought over another girl? Come on. <laughs> um, but it's You nice. also are like, Sojuro, that's not, you're like, it's not like that. And he's like, oh, don't, I'm, stop being silly. But also, good job. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, very funny about it. Yeah. Uh, we get just like a nice moment of, of the group getting to hang out together. Haru getting a little bit more introduced into the, the Phantom Thieves on a like personal note and, and not just in the midst of battle. Um, yeah, but she goes home and her dad is unsurprisingly a jerk and terrible about things. Um, he, they, they get into a little bit of an argument, um, about her being gone. Uh, her dad essentially tells her that like things have been settled. She's going to go live with that jerk. Um, right. She now is not even getting to decide where she lives. Um, and that becomes a very, big you know kind of sticking point for her because she was already pissed about this dude that she doesn't love and and is treating her horribly um and that really sort of solidifies things for her Um, right she calls him to to meet everyone and she comes over that night recounts what happened and we get our sort of timeline for this palace yes we Uh, get our deadline she she'll be taken to his house on october 11th so that means our deadline would be the 10th um and you know, we, we talk a little bit to her about like, hey, if we do this, aren't you a little worried about what might happen? Like your dad could be taken away if we change his heart. You might be branded a criminal's daughter. Um, right. Like it might affect your life badly in that way. And she's like, I know that, but I couldn't in good conscious, conscience ignore the problems he's causing for so many other people as well. Um, and so she right. does open it up to... <clears throat> from her point of view, we are going in from her personal level, but she also sees it from that more societal level as well. Um, yeah. It's not just about her. It's about yeah, everyone being treated badly by her mad, her bad dad. Hooray. Um, so we, we have our mission start. We, we get our, our big introduction in the cafe in our, in our bedroom. Um, and we get a free evening. <laughs> yes, within LeBlanc. Yes. What did What did you do? Uh, I read the billiards book. So, so I wanted to get the maxed out billiards thing. So I just read the billiards book so that now I have the ability to try the final trick shot that will get you the maxed out billiards or uh, technical level. I fixed the laptop to find the black hey! market. Site. Couldn't go on it, but I'll save that for <clears throat> for another day. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, we we get to September 19th, which is a full free day because we are now in... This is the first day of the free time. Exactly. We are in palace mode, so we're going to be getting our cadence of free days back again. Uh, We've got three-ish weeks, I think it is. I'm going to look at an actual calendar, but uh, I think it's about three-ish Yeah, we've got a bunch of free time. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so this is the first day, and it's exciting because now we're like in it, right? The palace has started. We've got a deadline. We've got a target. We've, are, we've gone to the palace. It's it's all kicking off. Um, do you want me to just jump into my day? Yeah, I was going to say, we have our free time. But did, I I don't think... Did you go to the palace? No. Okay. Just wanted to check. <laughs> I, wouldn't, nah. I wouldn't have been shocked. That was the only reason. You've gone to palaces no, I, early sometimes. I almost... I, I was, like, jumping around. I wanted to get to Kemi Max, but she's not quite there. So I did some stuff with, like, Chahaya and, and that sort of thing to get her up a little bit. Hoping to max her out next week. Um, so on this day, I leveled Yusuke. Oh, okay. Um, and then in the evening, dude, my evening was wild. So Sojiro was available, Mm -hmm. but I didn't have Max Kindness, so I couldn't hang out with him. Okay. Hifumi was available, but I didn't have Max Knowledge, so I couldn't hang out with him. So then I was like, fine, I'll just do, or her, excuse me. So I was like, fine, I'll just do billiards. 
and I did billiards, and then I screwed up the trick shot because I didn't have max proficiency. So I loaded, oh, no. and I just did the final Big Bang Burger challenge because <laughs> I was like, I need all of the stats. <laughs> so just give me all of the stats. Uh, and doing the final Big Bang Burger challenge maxed my proficiency. So nice. now I can do the technical thing. Okay, cool. That is a, that's a hell of an evening to have. It was, it was like just constant rejection. <laughs> Well, that's that's the point we're getting to in the game, where we're we're far yeah. in things, but not always as far as we need to be. Um, yeah. But there's some time for that. Uh, I ranked Takemi up to rank nine okay. during the day, and then ranked Mishima up to rank nine in the evening. So nice. just trying to catch up, because I know you were a little further ahead with the two of them, and I want to be able to talk about them soon. So yeah, got Mishima's both of them. maxed for me. Takemi's at nine. Cool. Needs to get to ten. So yeah. I should be able to get... Mishima ranked 10 probably this week. Then potentially maybe we'll talk about Mishima next week. Or we can keep uh, pushing him aside like we did with Kasumi. Uh, no, no, no. Never again. <laughs> never again. Uh, but we, yeah, that that ends the week. It's a little bit of a quieter end to it, but it is the the start of the palace. We are, we are in yep. it. We have our mission starts. Uh, we're not going to jump into the palace next week or anything. So take your time jumping into it, of course. Uh, but this is the next sort of free time uh, era. So I guess, as, as we've said before, let us know what you might want to hear us talk about. Um, things you might want to see, uh, not see, hear about, excuse me, um, d- for different parts of the game. Uh, I know there have been some like lingering topics people have thought about. So, so let us know what you want to hear about. Uh, we'll also let you know before we go into the palace so you can prepare accordingly. Uh, and it looks okay. like we'll have three full weeks of free time oh, wow. before the deadline. Okay. So yeah, we've got time to dig into things. Cool. And that also means that traditionally we'll do the palace on the third week. So we'll do it yes. at the end. Cool. Um, well, that sounds good to me. But other than that, we, um, for some reason, my recording of this is still live, but uh, parts of the screen disappeared. So if you, okay. no- if you notice some things are gone on the recording, I apologize. That's weird. Anyway, before we end the week, uh, Tom, I'm actually, because we're going to be getting into the palace soon and I want to save up for that, I'm going to save a Persona pseudonym this week. Whoa. So we can maybe okay. do a double down the line. But okay. um, you, do you have a pop quiz question for us? I do. So uh, fun fact, you actually stole mine this week. <gasps> um, so I had to pull up a backup. Because did- I was going to ask what Morgana calls Ryuji, because Carnal Blonde Monkey is just a very good insult. Oh, no, Instead, I'm so sorry. No, 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 it's good. I'm glad you brought it up. Instead, we're going to ask uh, my backup question, uh, which is, you mentioned Morgana sleeps on your chest. It's adorable and very sweet, but also very heavy. What does Joker describe uh, the feeling of Morgana sleeping on his chest as? This is a weird conversation. Uh, it's it's uh yeah that's that's the question he he describes it in a very specific way that i really enjoy so if you remember what that is leave us a comment or uh, send us an email or a tweet uh that is yeah all right i'm looking forward to the answers i hope there are also some wrong answers just because i want to know what people think it is if they don't yeah, remember even if you don't know what would describe exactly what would joker describe morgana as <laughs> Oh my god. Um, But that is going to pretty much wrap us up for this week's episode of Take Your Time. So, uh, Tom, thank you so much for joining me as always. Yeah, Uh, thank you. And, uh, of course, you can find both of us on Twitter. I'm at JM Dornbush. Tom is at Tom R. Marks. You can also tweet uh, comments or thoughts uh, about the show to us there. Uh, Wherever you're listening to this, if you're enjoying the show, please consider following it, liking it, uh, giving it five stars, writing a small review. Uh, It does help the show a ton to get out to more Persona fans, and we just want to be able to talk to more Persona fans about a game we love, especially as we get closer to the anniversary uh, of the series. Whatever happens, we'll definitely touch upon any of the announcements that may come up as they do. Um... But otherwise, we'll be back with more Persona 5 Royal playthrough next week because uh, it's time to go to bed. Now that Morgana's back, he can tell us it's time. It is indeed time. So uh, we're, we're going to head to bed. It's very dark outside. And uh, thank you again for joining us. As always, nice to steal you. Bye. Bye.